Hello, dear viewer. This is the second part of the story, Escape. So if you haven't seen the first one, make sure you check out the description, and there you will find a playlist with this story. And if you have already seen it, subscribe, make some tea, and have a good time watching. And it's all? Chapter 2 I keep telling you I'm not even trying to get in with her. She's got a husband. We're just good friends. Yeah, sure. I'd like to be friends with her too. Hell, I'd love to be friends with her. Forget it. She's so attached to her husband, you'd think he was gold. Come on, Mike. I've seen you two hugging and kissing. Like brother and sister. Good friends, hugging and kissing. Honestly, she's so hung up on her husband that no other man stands a chance. Bullshit, Mike. I saw you both at the Christmas party, and that kiss you exchanged was not a brotherly kiss. Right? But that doesn't mean anything. Her husband promised her he'd come, but he never showed up. She was furious and drunk on top of it. When she finally resigned herself to the fact that her husband wouldn't show up, she grabbed me and said, Damn it, it's a holiday party, and someone was going to kiss me under the mistletoe, and if it wasn't going to be Jerry, it was going to be you. That was the only time. I find that hard to believe. You want to know how obsessed she is with her husband? You know, all that shipping and overtime everybody's trying to avoid? She's working every minute to buy him a base boat for his birthday. Most of what she and I do is her asking me about engine sizes, fish finders, and everything else she plans to outfit the boat with. I just hope the guy realizes what a gem he's found in her. Let's hurry up. I only have until seven to play. When they left, I sat down on the wooden bench in front of the lockers and stared at the wall. Oh my god, what have I done? I had completely misinterpreted what was happening and then let myself freak out. I was doing what I mistakenly believed Patty was doing. I was cheating. I was going behind the back of the woman who loved me, and cheating, and more than once, and with many women. The only saving factor was that I didn't rebuke Patty. You cheat, so I'll cheat twice. Patty didn't know that I was cheating, and that I obviously wasn't going to do it again. I would do everything in my power to make it up to her, even though she would never know but it didn't work out. I just wasn't the kind of guy who could cheat and then go through life pretending everything was okay. I could act like that as long as I thought we were both cheating. But as soon as I found out she was faithful to me, it hurt me. I couldn't even bring myself to make love to her because the touch of a cheater on her would defile her. I really ruined my marriage and messed up my life. It was a very stupid thing to do. All I should have done in my day was to just walk up and say, this is what's going on and this is why I think so, and we could have talked it over. After the overheard conversation in the locker room, I had no doubt there was a reasonable explanation for the suitcases in her trunk as well, but it's not like I'd ever given her a chance to explain herself. I was totally screwed. I couldn't face her. I didn't have the courage to sit down and tell her what I had done and why. I was a coward, and I did what cowards do. I ran away. I went to my boss told him I caught my wife cheating, and I was going to move on. I like the company and like the work I do, and if you have an opening somewhere else, I'd like to move there. If not, I guess I'll have to apply. He picked up the phone, made a call, and there I was, on my way to Colorado. I told him that my wife would probably be looking for me, to get me in trouble, and I told him to tell her that I left without warning, and that he had no idea where I'd gone. The next day, while Patty was at work, I loaded all my stuff into the pickup truck. At the last minute, I wrote a simple note, I'm sorry, and put it on the kitchen table. It was disgusting for her, of course, but she'd get over it eventually. She deserved better than me. She'd be able to get a divorce as abandoned and move on with her life. It happened 14 months ago, and in those 14 months, not a day went by that I didn't think about Patty and what we had, and I had so foolishly ruined. Luckily, I had a lot of work, Work occupied my mind and hands for 10 to 12 hours a day, but the nights were killing me, and waking up alone in the morning was murderous. When I first came to my new job, I decided to go to a bar after work and drown my sorrows, but that went away quickly. Going to work every morning hungover wasn't good for me, and the beer was ruining everything the gym and running had done for me. So I got in the van, found a local gym, and started getting in shape. After being there for six months, I noticed a few women who seemed interested in me, but I didn't take the initiative. 
My head was still full of thoughts of Patty, and I didn't know if the day would ever come when I could think of another woman. I opened my Kanoko statement and saw that I had overpaid and gotten a credit, so I tore it up and threw it in the trash. I didn't open the visa application. I knew damn well I had no credit on that account and wouldn't make the payment until my next paycheck, so I put it in my pocket. I picked up the letter from Patty and stared at it. I brought it up to my nose and imagined I could smell her, then tossed it in the trash. That's it? A voice came from behind me. You don't even open the letters, you just throw them away? I turned around and saw Patty. Hey Jerry, long time no see. I just stared at her. I couldn't even run away because she was between me and the door. Who bit your tongue? Well, I shouldn't be surprised. You've always been a man of few words. I got two words when you left, and I don't even know what you regret. All last year I've been thinking. I'll never understand why you wasted an extra word. You could have done it with just one word. Goodbye. Come on, Jerry, say something. How did you find me? I won't. If you run away again, I may have to use the same method again. I'm not going to give you another opportunity to cover your tracks. The point is, I'm here, and I'm not leaving until I know everything. Not here. Let's go to my house. So what in God's name made you think I was cheating on you? You had all the classic signs of a cheating wife. Suddenly you're working late when you've never worked late before. Increased activity with your husband because you either felt guilty or your lover was winding you up by the time you had to go home, so your husband had to put out the fire. Or maybe because you enjoyed giving your husband your lover's leftovers. The evenings when you stayed in for drinks with your co-workers who kept keeping you later and later. Then I found suitcases full of the very clothes you never wore for me in your trunk. And that's all along with the fact that I showed up at the Christmas party and saw you tongue wrestling with a guy while all your co-workers were yelling at you to get a room and go to a motel. They wouldn't have said that unless they were sure you were lovers. It all came down to your wife cheating on you. You poor stupid fool. Why didn't you talk to me? The suitcases belong to Anne. I told you the airline lost her luggage. They found it. But by then, Anne was in the hospital on a stretch and asked me to pick up the luggage and overtime was real. All you had to do was look at my receipts. You're right about the increase in lovemaking being driven by guilt, but it was guilt for leaving you alone so often. I knew it bothered you and I tried to make it up to you. As for Christmas, it meant nothing. I had too much to drink. Mad at you for not being there to give me a Christmas kiss under the mistletoe, so I grabbed Mike. Yes, it was unnecessary, but if you had stayed, you would have seen us break up and go to different tables, and he didn't even dance with me the whole evening. God, Jerry, I can't believe you just left me like that and didn't even try to explain. That's not why I left you. I left because of me, because of what I did in return. And what did you do? I took a deep breath and told her about Sally and Marla and everyone else and how I'd managed to keep my marriage together because my cheating kept me on equal footing with her cheating. And then, when I found out you weren't cheating, my life just fell apart. I couldn't look you in the eye knowing what I had done to you. And I realized you deserved better than a cheating asshole, so I left. She sat there looking at me, trying to comprehend my words, and then she said, How did you know I wasn't really cheating? I told her about the conversation I overheard at the gym. Her face went a little pale and she said, My god, what the hell? Let's see if I've got this right. You thought I was cheating, so you were cheating to make us even, right? I said, Yes. And she continued, So while we were even... You thought we could go on living together and that everything would be fine. Everything would be okay, right? I nodded. It was only when you became convinced that I wasn't cheating that everything went to hell, right? I said again. Yes. So, if you had never heard that conversation in the gym, we'd still be living together? Would you still be playing with your girlfriends while staying with me? Maybe. She stared at me for another minute, then asked, did you love me? Yes, I did. I still do. The only reason I stayed with you thinking you were cheating was because I loved you so much I couldn't leave you. You know I love you, right? My coming here should show that. I was devastated when you left, and I didn't know what led to it. I need you in my life, Jerry. I need you to come home with me, or I'll move here to be with you. But one way or another with you, Jerry. With you, please. I can't, Patty. After all this, I just can't. Being with you is a constant reminder of what a cheater I was. I just can't look you in the eye every day knowing what I did. 
But would you be able to do that if I cheated on you? While we were even, you could look me in the eye, right? I nodded. Then come home, Jerry, because we're even. I cheated on you. You were right, you just used the wrong information, but you came to the right conclusions. On nights when I worked overtime, Mike and I made love like a couple of love-crazed rabbits. It started one night, just before we finished our shift. We bumped into each other, looked at each other, and it was like a spark went between us. He just grabbed me, flipped me over, bent me over a packing crate, and took me. And I let him. Didn't say a word, just let him take me. After that, almost every night after that, when we were working overtime, he'd catch me in a dark corner, and... I never said no, I never said yes, I just let him take me. It was fun, and I loved it. I loved doing it, not Mike. I never even kissed him. That kiss at the Christmas party was our first and only kiss. I had a husband who loved me and who I was crazy about, and who made fantastic, passionate love to me, and I had a part-time stud who treated me badly. And then I went and ruined everything. You ruined it? How? You started acting a little weird, and I thought you suspected something. The overheard conversation was a setup. It was supposed to calm you down and keep you from knowing Mike and I screwed up. Instead, he broke us up. If I hadn't tried to cheat, we'd still be together. You'd still be with me, thinking we were equals. Are you saying you're still gonna do it with Mike? No, Jerry. That's bitter irony. That fake conversation that turned you away from me also ended Mike and I's relationship. That night when we were working overtime, he brought the two guys he'd had the conversation with and told me it was all played out. So I left him. All I've done since that night is work and try to find you. I need you, Jerry. I'm not a person without you. Please, honey, can we put the past behind us and start over? We're acting like children. Can we please, please start over? I stared at her and my thoughts raced at a hundred miles an hour. I loved her to death and missed her so much that not a day went by that I didn't think about or want to be with her. But could I go through that again? She must have read my mind. It will never happen again, Jerry. I can promise you that. The last fourteen months have been hell, Jerry. They've been the most miserable months of my life. Life without you is killing me, and I will never do anything to put myself through that hell again. Please, Jerry. I'm begging you, come back to me. At home or here, just let me be with you. There was really no question about what to do. I only ran away from her because I didn't think I was worthy. I loved her very much, and if she wanted me back, knowing everything about me, I'd be a fool to refuse. As for her cheating on me, I had already made peace with it when I started playing the stay-even game. Can we? We should. She loved me enough to lie to me, portraying herself as the woman she never was. She never had an affair with Mike. She just told me that to make me believe we were even, to come home. How do I know that? I went back to my gym, and one morning, Mike walked in. I don't know why, but I looked at him for a long time, and after a while, he came up to me and asked, Do I know you? No, but you knew my wife well enough to have an affair with her. Hey, what are you babbling about, man? I didn't have any affairs with married women. Did you forget the affair with Patty Bradley? The hell I didn't. What makes you think I had an affair with Patty? She admitted it. I told her everything. He shook his head. I'd love to, but that Christmas kiss is all it ever was. It's not like I didn't try. The conversation you overheard is true. I don't know why she wants you to think I was her lover. All I can say is that I wanted to. And I tried like hell to make it happen. But she never even gave me a chance. Hell, I was stunned when I got that Christmas kiss. Will I ever tell Patty about my conversation with Mike? No. I'm not going to do anything that would tip the apple cart over. She did buy me this base boat, and in a perverse sort of way, I named the boat and wrote the name in big gold letters on both sides. Every time Patty and I board Mike's fun, it reminds each of us how fragile relationships can be, and how hard we have to work to keep them intact. Well, that's it. The end of this wonderful story. But let me remind you that we also have other stories that are just as good, if not better than this one. Other stories are always on our channel, so have fun watching them.